the the podcast space has been something that we've been comfortable with for so yeah. long, right? We've been doing ItCAF for six years um, and being able to learn more specifically for me. And I talk about it all on the show, um, being able to come out of my shell more to where I can have conversations with anybody. Now I don't give a fuck, but like I, I wasn't able to do that before it calf and to be able to bring this part of me out is such an amazing thing too. And specifically during the strikes when there's so much going on. So this is amazing. And I'm, I'm sure you'll enjoy this number. We had 45 episodes this past year with 24 of them having guests. So that is kind of crazy. More than half, um, which is awesome. Because like I said, with half of the year being shut down, not allowed to talk to people about entertainment subject matter. Um, that was an amazing thing. And I also am really happy with it this year too, because we did a lot of behind the scene people a lot we of did. directors a lot of writers you know i feel like because that's what we are we're directors we're writers we're yeah. editors we're cinematographers like so to be able i think those are some of our best interviews this past year some of our we most just, listened to yeah we were just able to connect with them so much and like it was i feel like you know it wasn't our standard how we have a conversation with an actor um, even though we can sympathize with them because we have been fellow actors as well, but this, this type of stuff behind the scenes, the nitty gritty, that's what we love. That's what we enjoy. That's what we get up every single day to do. So, and those people can feel our enthusiasm. Yeah. I love one of my favorite parts of this show is when people, no matter if they're actors, directors, writers, whatever, what have you. They come on the show, they're they're kind of closed off, they're a little, you know, like, don't really know what to expect. But then by the end of it, they're just, like, free, open, like, laughing, cutting up with us. That is my favorite thing, man, because to be able to do that and talk about a subject matter that we love, we know they love, it's something so special. Yeah, and, and, and to be able to put someone at ease. Right. The amount of times that we've had people tell us you make it easy to open up. I feel comfortable or they refer to it as a safe space. They know that if they if they're coming on to talk about a project and it goes somewhere else and they start opening up about life and what's going on, they know that's a safe place for them to do that. And that's probably the, the best compliment that we can get when when our guests come on and say, they feel like we offer them a safe space to come on and just be themselves. They don't have to come on and feel like they have to put on a persona. They can just be themselves when they talk to us. And I love that. I, I love because we're just ourselves. And, you know, and, and, and so for them to come on, because you guys know, I mean, when people go on talk shows or they go on podcasts or whatever, there's a list of questions that they're prepared to answer and they talk about and they pitch and they, they do their, their like, like, like if, if they were talking to the, the studio boss, right? And, and so for them to come on and just feel like, I can do this from my living room. I'm going to kick back on my couch and we're going to talk about my kids and we're going to talk about the project. But I also want to talk about like, have you tried this food? I love cooking and baking. And like when they feel like they can come on and just be themselves and have a great time, that that's that's all we want to do is, is we want to foster that type of an environment. And to be able to do that is one of the greatest accomplishments I think that we've done, not just this year, but the whole six years we've been doing the show. And I, like you said, I love that the amount of times that we talk to the directors and or the costume designers or the casting directors, and they were like, you know, you, you've been there. You've got, remember when on set when this happens or that happens? Um, I love that. I also love that they all, watched our film they all took the time to watch our film they are sharing our film with their other people our casting directors are sharing it with their actors to say you should check this out this is how this is kind of a thing you do or 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 managers are saying hey these are the kind of projects you think you should be in or kind of like it's an amazing feeling to know the type of community that we're in and to be able to expose the people that you don't stay and watch at the end of the credits, right? 
to be able to get those people on our show and expose those people and who they are and what they do and how integral they are to the industry, that's awesome. That's awesome. Imagine Yellowstone. Imagine any Christopher Nolan film. Imagine any of the biggest shows on television right now without John Papsadera. Yeah. You don't know his name. You do now, thanks to us. But this is the man who is single-handedly casting some of the biggest shit in Hollywood over the last 30 years. This man is uh, – like if you – if we listed off the credits and not a single person knows who this man is. But now you do. And now you know the name. Now you look for that name. And, and I love – that we're able to expose those type of people and give them the credit where credit is due. And and I hope that this coming season, we just have a mass amount of more people like that. Let's talk about the editors. Let's talk about the writers. Let's talk about the costume designers. Let's talk about the gaffers, for Christ's sake. How do you do it without lights? <laughs> I mean, do you use natural light? Do you light it with, like, artificial? Do you, like, you know... We're giving you all that, and and I love that, and so I'm right there with you. I just it's a blast to talk to people who understand what it takes to make a movie. It, it's fun. Yeah, I, I completely agree. And I mean, like I said, with 45 episodes with 24 guests, like it it was an amazing experience to be able to navigate and balance everything during the strikes and during like off times because like it was during the strikes like. You really didn't know specifically for smaller production companies like ours and smaller studios. Like, you didn't know what was going to happen. Man. No. So, I mean, like, mental health pay played a big part in that specifically for me. I know it did for you as well, but it was like one of those things where I'm like, fuck, like, I don't know what to do today because there wasn't really a lot to do. Like, so it got me really not unmotivated but just like unambitious i didn't feel like i could do anything um as far as like trying to network with people or to even like i, I mean i really wrote a lot and i mean we really came up with a lot of new stories because of the strike so that is good that's the good thing but to implement those stories to show those other people to try to pitch our stories like we couldn't do any of that so no. it really did take an effect on my mental health during that six months, that seven months, because I felt like, you know, no matter what you did, it's not going anywhere right now. Yeah. And uh, it was it was rough, man. It really was. It, I mean, I, I totally agree with you. It was like we came up, we were forced kind of. It was like during COVID. We were, we were hunkered down and couldn't do anything. So what do we do? We write. And, and so we came up with these, like, you had a movie idea. I had a movie idea. We had a TV idea again. We, we, we were doing all of these different things, and we were so excited about it, and we couldn't tell anybody except each other. <laughs> it's yeah. like, we can't fucking do shit. And, and the projects that we did have, you were like, are we going to lose everybody? Are they not going to be able to, like, you know, our, our options are going to run out? Are our, our cast now, are we going to have to recast? Are we going to have to, like, there was so much stress involved with everything. Um, It was, yeah, you're right. It was a mental health, like, challenge. And I yeah. so, thankfully, we were doing EOP. And we were able to get that weekly therapy session to try to be like, God, this fucking week sucked. But we're going to have an awesome show on EOP this week. And we're going to yeah. talk about some stuff. And so, thank gosh, we were doing that because, you know, it yeah. really did help break the monotony of the mental anguish on the one side of what we do. And then to have that outlet to escape from it and talk about the anguish and talk about the stress and talk about all this. Stuff. It was, I don't even want to think where we would have been or how we would have adapted or done what we did this year without having EOP as that outlet. It might've been a totally different situation. Everything might've been totally different on how we did anything or how we would come out of it. Like we have, if we didn't have that outlet as an escape. So, um, 
Yeah. Yeah, because, I mean, let's be completely honest about it. We lost out on a lead for our short film that we were, like, gearing up, ready to go because of the strikes and because of scheduling conflicts. Yeah. And, like, so now in this upcoming new year, we're having to recast that, which isn't a problem. Like, we completely understand. Yeah. But that's just the nature of the beast. Right. Like, you have to be able to adapt, bob and weave, be able to figure out what you're going to do next.